A very warm welcome, and uh, for those that went with us into the break, we're glad you're still with us. If you are just joining us, welcome on board. You're watching Morning at 10 TV, and we are coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center. You find us at the Kickstarter leg of the program, and we are going to be discussing what is being described as efforts to decolonize the curriculum in the country. Before I introduce my guests who will be giving us much needed perspective in understanding where we are going, let me just give you a preamble. Emerging trends across the globe have compelled a shift in education, sparing not the curriculum for both lower and upper levels of education. Yesterday, education specialists and stakeholders guided by the Minister of Education, the First Lady, Janet Kal Kataha Museveni reviewed the curriculum to speak more about the education and the efforts that are underway that were started by the minister. I'm now joined by Dr. Deborah Magera Chaze, the manager Early Childhood Education and Care Program. I'm also joined by Professor Matovu Musa, an education expert, to have us into the fold of what is going on behind the scenes in as far as uh, realigning, streamlining, making better our education curricula across the various stages of education is uh, concerned. Shall we move forward or shall we again be in a case of fits and starts? That's the conversation that is getting underway. A very warm welcome, Doctor. Thank you. I'm glad you made it. Very bad weather out there, no doubt. I'm sure the guys at the mm. meteorological uh, department are also reviewing their updates. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be giving <laughs> us a lot more. <laughs> well, here we are. Efforts to improve, I must say, mm. the education curricula across board is what is being rolled out. For this particular one, primary uh, lower education, as the minister rolled out yesterday, it is it's one that sparks debate. Mm. Uh, people have spoken about the fact that we have for long studied content and been given information that is obsolete. Let me begin with uh, Dr. Deborah Magirachazze. Mm. As a manager at Early Childhood Education and Care Program or Center, mm. I'm sure we've been told time and again the start is important. Sure. If the start is faulty, mm. <laughs> then you basically preparing to fail. Just take us through what the program is and what the thrust of uh, whatever you're doing. Okay. Uh, 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 good morning, viewers. I would like to start from the very question. Mm. Um, all to do with the, the foundation education, which we today call uh, the early childhood care and education. Mm. We are actually have started from there with the reviewing this package, uh, which is uh, uh, used to, to handle the children who are of the age of three uh, to six years. Mm. And we know that very well at that level, we have three classes because that is the cycle. Mm. The first cycle, the normal word is uh, baby, class, baby class. And then we have middle, middle class and, and then top, top class. Mm. So we have, we have embarked on looking at uh, this curriculum which we had developed because the first one was, uh, which, which, which was put in place was in the year 1993. Mm. And then from there, we moved to 2005. We came up with a new one. And you could, do, you could calculate and see the, 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 the difference in the years mm. since the time we looked at it. So today, we are looking at this curricula because we conducted a needs uh, assessment study countrywide mm. and we found there are so many global emerging issues and uh, we also found that of course there are some factors that are affecting the implementation and we also saw that no I think today it's high time we looked into this so the this package of course it is uh, competence based mm. the one we, we, we have been using but we want to, to see that it is addressing issues to do with the, the information uh, communication and technology. We want to see that at least this, this package is looking at the issues of climate change, to, name, to mention but a few. Mm. And uh, with this package, we don't look at the subjects. We go learning areas okay. because the child is still wiring. Mm. And we, we are not saying that let, her, let us now look at subject, but we are looking at those concepts which capture areas to do with science, 
areas to do with the social studies, um, areas to do uh, with what is happening in the community. We are looking at the local language mm -hmm. as well. And we want to see that, yes, when this child is out from there, she has the, the fully fledged uh, developed aspects, mm -hmm. which are the social, the emotional, the physical, uh, the spiritual as well, because we are looking at that. Yeah, a complete person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we want the, this child who is uh, for sure holistically mm. developed. So uh, getting off from there, we now head to looking at now the package of primary one mm. and pre, uh, to primary three, then from primary uh, four to primary seven. Okay. Remember, mm. that ch the child goes through that process. That is right. right? Okay, uh, that is the foundational level. Let me yeah. come to Professor Matovo Musa. You are at the Center of Postgraduate Studies at the Islamic University in Uganda. Yesterday, stakeholders and uh, other sector players convened to map the way forward in terms of review of the primary or lower level curriculum. Did you attend? Were you in the know of it? Uh, Yes, uh, I was part of it. You were part uh, of it. Yes, of first, give us what was discussed and what was the thrust of the discussion. Uh, uh, Chris and uh, Doctor, yes. uh, I would like also to first greet our viewers uh, that mm -hmm. good morning uh, and then get back to the question. Uh, the thrust of uh, the conference uh, mm. that was uh, initiated today by yesterday by the first lady mm. uh, basically was an art thing what is being done uh, basically by the national curriculum development center yeah and uh, their milestone they have moved in the change of the curriculum uh, to to be a competence-based curriculum mm -hmm. across the board and uh, basically what was packaged uh, within the whole process of the curriculum is what they called decolonizing uh, the decolonizing, decolonizing the curriculum mm. uh, we all know that uh, basically our education system uh, was much based on the education that was brought to us by the colonialists and uh, we remember that during in the colonial times, mm. the colonialists used our education or used the education system as a system to keep in power. Mm. Because when they came to us, uh, they had three basic things. They had health, where they would settle, they would put a hospital, yeah. they would put a church or a mosque, and they would put a school. Mm. So one of the ways they wanted to settle in power was through the education system. And basically, the education system they provided to us was Eurocentric in mm. nature. Yeah. So it was to serve their interests to keep themselves in power. And we also remember as well, during independence, when the colonialists gave us <coughs> our independence, they gave us the land, they gave us the offices, but we they do not... They redistributed the land to us. They, they redistributed <laughs> the land, yes, yes, that's right. They redistributed yeah. the land back to us. Yeah. But they didn't hand over the education system. Mm. Even given, uh, at that time, the education system was purely divided. Yeah. For example, we had... Uh, schools for the whites and then also had schools for the blacks mm -hmm. so and then for the coloreds so that separation alone mm -hmm. showed us that the education they were offering to us was different so they had a package for the whites mm -hmm. and then they had a package uh, for, for the natives before so you go any further there's something that you introduced that is very fundamental to where we are the fact that there were sets of curricula for blacks and for the whites very is good. government privy or does it have access to the curricula that was that were employed or rolled out for the whites so, so that we can do a juxtaposition and see so actually this is what ncdc is doing right now okay for the so many years mm. because the curricula that was provided to the whites 
uh, provided critical thinking, creative thinking, intellectual leadership. Mm. Whereas the curriculum they offered to us as the blacks was uh, instruction was for administrative purposes and the management of the system to keep the whites in place. And that's the curriculum we have been moving with quite a very long period of time. So the curriculum that would have been best for us is the curriculum that requires critical thinking. Mm. Because yesterday at the conference, uh, there is somebody who talked about an aspect of critical thinking and said that we were taught to reproduce knowledge by that time. Mm. If they tell us two plus three is equals to five, and he asked a question, but is it really five? Mm. We must critically think beyond that. That's right. And he gave us an example that if I give you two big fish and three small fish, will they equal to five fish? So <laughs> that's the kind of critical <laughs> thinking we need to, to have in our the knowledge. To and then at the same time, we need to have creative or innovative thinking. Mm. The thinking in our education system that generates knowledge, that is novel and also useful to our communities. Okay, uh, somebody would be constrained at this particular moment in time mm. that this discussion has come at this time. Sure. And we are wondering, mm. for 50 plus years, mm. this nation has rolled out an education that those who have been beneficiaries of it and become mm. policy makers knew that was m totally misaligned yeah. and we have continued with it mm. well somebody might say it's a good thing that we are finally looking into changing everything but for 50 years mm. I find this a little bit unnerving that we were able to know that we are being fed and we are feeding ourselves something that doesn't, that doesn't work for us, sure. but we continue with it. You are at uh, the National Curriculum Development Center. Before the whole need came up for the reviews, and uh, what was the thinking behind the education system? What triggered the discomfort? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, what triggered uh, the whole issue mm. is because you could see that the, the product is not having efficient skills. Because today we are looking at the skills. That's around which time? Ninety-five. I, I, I would. I want to. Say, I want to say nineteenth century because we are now <laughs> in the twenty-first century. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You find that the the, the, <coughs> the children are missing are missing this, the practical skills, mm. the soft skills, as we are saying. Because today, the 21st century is actually basing on the, the collaboration, the communication. How, how is this child who has achieved the skill? Mm. It, ha, at, what, at what standard is this skill? Mm. So that this child is able, really, to move on self-reliantly. That's right. So uh, you, you, you end up f asking yourself, that in those days, I would I want to flash back on the indigenous education mm. because with the indigenous education, it even involved the parents. The parents were sitting at the fireplace, and again the parents were were very 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 active, mm. doing doing things practically for the child. And uh, I want to recall that uh, through the entry point was actually. To know about God, you remember the missionaries when they were coming, when they came in, mm. they were teaching the reading and writing. But through the reading and writing, they were also looking at these uh, pr uh, practical practical skills, mm -hmm. like brick making, like building. If if I'm to recall, yeah. like weaving mats, and like carpentry. even uh, building using the mud. Yeah. But today, can someone build a, a house made uh, 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 using mud? No, because. We are now going the, stigma, the other way. The stigmatization alone uh, yes, doesn't yes. allow you to even get halfway. If, even the theory, <laughs> the theory of change has it all. Yeah. You find that the mindset, someone, uh, someone, uh, you give in something new, but the mindset says, no, no. I, I am what I am. Uh, if if I, am, I am what I am, therefore I'm satisfied. But then we are saying, how are you collaborating? Mm. How are you communicating? What about the innovativeness? Are you there? Mm -hmm. that's, that's where now we say no, it is high time 
we looked into this, these packages okay. and see whether they can address and support this child. At the end of the day, we want this child to be able to serve self-reliantly, mm. self-reliantly. Mm. Yes. Dr. Matov, listening to uh, Dr. Chaze, you perhaps realize like I do that we are in a really tight position as a nation because when it comes to realigning an education system we are looking at a generation yes. the people who will actually be able mm. uh, to take on the kind of thinking that this new curriculum uh, seeks to shape will be people who will begin to you know uh, get out of the education structure in 15 17 or even 18 years from now yes. now within this period of transition, mm -hmm. what is the panacea that we have? Oh, we must endure and know that for us we are, <laughs> we can no longer be straightened. <laughs> Let's just wait for those that come after us to be critical, better critical thinkers. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris. Uh, this is uh, a wider space mm. uh, that has to be utilized uh, effectively. There are very many things uh, that have to come with that mm. uh, because uh, basically the two major aspects what have been incorporated in the new curricula are skills, uh, both the visible and soft skills, mm. and then the entrepreneurial aspect uh, in the skills that have been uh, done by, uh, by the students That's right. across the board. Yeah. The biggest aspect that comes with that is stakeholders' involvement. Mm. That's one aspect. Mm. Who are the big players into this? Uh, and involving all the stakeholders. We have the society, we have the political leaders, we have the technocrats, we have all uh, citizens. Even the media. Even the media, mm. all the citizens and all stakeholders, the media, mm. to be part of the game. Mm. So if all people do not get on board, then we are likely to have uh, certain things not done right. Two, we also need to have the finances. Mm. Oh, that's, whether a that's a critical one. Whether, <laughs> whether from us or from the donors. Mm. But just understand that we are saying that what you people have been fronting to us as the best education system is not the best. Mm. And they are also the funders now. So we get... That again presents another uh, that's, <laughs> That also dilemma. Present, presents another dilemma. Yeah. So we need to see that we have the funds there, whether the government goes into its coffers to put the funds there. Mm. And then the other aspect I see is not only to look at the curriculum, but the enabling environment for it to to to, to, to thrive yeah so what are the aspects that might be needed around for the curriculum to come up mm. Mm. so we might need the environment we might need uh, the technical team from ncdc mm -hmm. and, and all other mm. environments to be prepared and also thought of uh, then the other aspect i see we have much dwelt on the curriculum and its deliverance mm. but then we also need to look at who is going to deliver the curriculum yeah. we might prepare a very good curriculum uh, we prepare the environment but those people to deliver it mm. how are they trained have they acquired the skills yes the skills, in other words, because these people who are going to, who are delivering the curriculum, for example, now in the lower classes, mm. are people who are trained in the other mode. Yes. So have we provided extra training to them to see that they can adequately uh, deliver uh, the curriculum? Then, among all other players, I would like to put at the pro front is the political will. If wow. uh, the policy makers, uh, the government itself, uh, the lawmakers, mm -hmm. uh, the executive and the judiciary do their roles right, I see a bright future 
in implementing this new curriculum that is coming on board. That speaks of the fact that uh, the need to change things is apparent, mm -hmm. but we are also very aware of the challenges that come with that. I'll be returning very shortly on uh, how the minister addressed the aspect of how teachers right now are being, uh, well, to use a word that doesn't sound pretty good, treated. Mm -hmm. Already we have uh, inconsistencies in wages. Many think they are not looked at as worthy. Uh, so the motivation aspect is completely down. It's a bit of a dilemma. But let me return to Dr. Uh, Chazze uh, from the ECC, that is Early Childhood Education and Care Program at the National uh, Curriculum Development Center. You spoke about local language and the ability to learn within your own settings. Yes. That is the foundational premise of knowledge acquisition because right. many times a child is able to <coughs> relate with the environment they are in and the language that is easily spoken. Some, mm. some are, happen to speak English, mm. mother comes back, daddy comes back, it's mm. English, it's English, mm. uh, seen as the standard, you know, so much so that they forget to speak the local language. Mm. Now when you look at the education system, it is basically premised on English. Yeah. Me, in my own language, I would struggle to identify what the iota is called. <laughs> you know, what particular vein mm -hmm. is, you know, you're like, okay, if we change things here and there, and I'm asked mm -hmm. a question, mm -hmm. what is the preliminary vein? I don't know. Mm -hmm. How will the understanding of knowledge, the knowledge that we've been, and which we use every day, mm -hmm. be clustered into the local form for us to appreciate it very quickly mm -hmm. and relate. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, mm. I've loved the question. <coughs> uh, actually, we are looking at the local language seriously mm. because we, we see that the, the child's beginning of learning is from that communication. That's right. Which was done when she was born. Mm. And I, I believe that when the mother is breastfeeding, communicates to that child in local language. Yeah? That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> you Some see? mothers are, so, oh, come on, stop biting me. You know? No, but they communicate. They are communicating. In, she communicates in yeah, the local language. Local language so, sure. so the very first vocabulary mm -hmm. is picked from that language the mother is trying to express. That's right. But today we even have fathers who are, who are not breastfeeding, <laughs> but are feeding. <laughs> <laughs> are feeding, and they communicate yeah. in that local language. That's right. So, uh, to National Cultural and Development Center uh, in within the structure. We have uh, uh, a literature bureau mm. that is going to handle all issues to do with the local languages. And we also have local language specialists. And we, we, are, we are actually respecting all the languages because we are guided by the existing uh, legal frameworks, mm. uh, starting with the constitution, because the constitution has a lineup of this, these local languages. That's right. And we are seeing that- How many are they? Uh, so far, the languages that have we have tried to put on board, uh, we have tried to put on board around 35, uh, 35 languages, and uh, we are we are trying to come. We have come up with distinctly well-established language boards mm. with orthographies because orthographies are the ones that guide. Mm. They they are they have principles that guide how the language should be handled, That's and right. those are around seventeen mm. of them not forgetting the biggest and largest local languages mm. in the country. So we have labored to see that uh, now at the level of early childhood, uh, the curriculum which we have been using and which we are still going to look at uh, when we have reviewed, we are still going to translate mm. because we are advocating for the translation. And uh, we are, we, with the reading, we have a good model, which is the early grade reading model that is advocating for the promotion of the local languages because uh, through it, we want to see that, yes, this child understands her language. Because even the English itself, mm. we are already seeing the gaps. That's why we are reviewing. That's right. Today we are talking about phonics. Mm. And phonics is all to do with the, the sound of the letter. Sound of the letter. In but fact, many of the uh, kindergarten 
of <laughs> learners these days do write based on sounds. Yes. So much so that some parents get confused. They're like, yeah. hey, what uh, did you do? And we are, we are, we are, we are planning actually to, to bring the parents on board. Mm. And we also want to bring the teachers on board. Mm. And the teacher education, we are working together uh, to see that they also conducted their continuous professional development. Okay. And we look at the, all these issues of the local language, the teaching of phonics, and we are now surely advocating for the these uh, instructional strategies mm. uh, where we are looking at the, the, the play best. Because the parent doesn't feel satisfied when the child is doing play. That's right. And yet we mm. know. That is where most of the learning yeah. is most effective. Yeah, 95% yeah. of the child, actually 99% mm. of the child's learning is mm. through, play. through play. So it is through play at that level where we want the child to pick up, to love the language, to use her language. And we've been telling teachers, don't beat that child who has used her local language. Mm. Because in those days, there used oh to be punishments. This yeah. one is speaking vernacular. If, <laughs> if I were to collect <laughs> trophies of the born, <laughs> <laughs> I would have a very lovely and rich <laughs> <laughs> and and the, yeah. the sucks. But I think it was yeah. even done innocently, yeah, very not innocent. knowing that they, we are really damaging. That's right. Because the all understanding, you accelerate it through the local language. That's right. Then from there, you transit to the second language. Mm. Because, in, for example, those who are speaking English, that can be their local language. Mm. But then you have two parties. One party is speaking Ateso, Ateso and um, the other party is speaking Butaleja. Exactly. Interesting. But for both of you, you had land, you are calling yourselves land. And now you say, here, I don't want local language. <laughs> but now how are you going to communicate when you go to the community, when you go to the mother and the, and the father? How are you going to, are you going to say, yeah, hey, mama, the, don't you the think? The challenges are enormous, <laughs> and of course the discussion cannot yes. be exhausted sure. at that particular uh, stage. What I know is that it's going to be a continuous process mm. of uh, twitching here and there. Yeah. But this is very much a reaction to global trends. Yes. Many education systems across the globe are struggling with the need to be streamlined and to adopt to what they also describe as mm. global trends. Yeah. But let me just extract one comment from a gentleman here uh, described as uh, his, uh, he, he gave a keynote address in fact at uh, the meeting. Sheikh Mansour bin Musalam, the Secretary General of the Organization of Education Cooperation, recommended that Uganda's curriculum should first appreciate local trends to mm. achieve global trends. Mm. And this is the quote. If we are to focus on the global trends, we would be engaging in an abstract which mm. does not resonate with ourselves. Mm. The education systems must not simply adapt to the global trends. He added that Africa does not need an education system mm. for changing the world, mm. rather one that will change the world. Having attended that meeting and listened to this keynote address, mm. what is your take on global trends? We are responding to global trends, mm. but we also need to understand local. our local context. Mm. How do we play around with this? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, I would attend to that and mm. then also uh, link to what uh, uh, first attend to. Uh, doc, Dr. Deborah, <laughs> what she said. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem we have uh, with our education system today mm. is the colonization. Colonization. We are which, basically in Which bondage. we want to right now to decolonize. Mm. For example, the education system we've had for quite a very long period of time has taught us that what is ours is bad. Our languages are not appropriate. Thank you. Even in our education systems, we should not use them. It is punishable to use your language. That we are looking and then mm. a person who speaks very good Spanish, yeah. French, and English, and English is, is very good, is know? excellent, is the best in our society. <laughs> the standard. Which is quite wrong. <laughs> very wrong. Mm. So if we look at those countries that we say that are developed countries, they have not taught their children in local languages, sorry, in foreign languages. That's right. They have used their local languages mm. to teach their children. Sure. Mm. So the only challenge we might have is a multiplicity of languages right now. We, yeah. have, we have very many. Very many. But that's an ongoing process that we can sort out ourselves later. For example, like mm -hmm. other East African countries are almost sorting it out with the Swahili that they are aligning themselves to a certain given language mm. or language which is not here but that one can come mm. with time what we need is to start 
going to back going back to what you asked and what uh, the keynote speaker said we need to start with what we have what we have is what really suits us mm. and for example our countries are greatly based on agriculture mm. but we have <coughs> totally thrown out agri our agriculture and actually we have made it a punishment school. I don't know whether <laughs> National <laughs> yep. Cultural Development Center has addressed it. It still works that. pretty much. <coughs> if that you if you do a punishment, mm. you go to the farm. So if you do something wrong, mm. they give you digging in the garden <laughs> as a punishment. <laughs> but this is the backbone of our country and mm. we are taking it as a punishment. That's ours. Mm. Those people do not have agriculture, do not have anything. They have decided to live on what they have. For example, technology. Mm. They came up with certain things that would make them survive mm. and thought maybe technology would take them to another level. And that's where they have concentrated, mm. thought, and built. Okay. Mm. So I believe that when we start with what we have, we develop it, those people develop what they have, then we can work together. Mm. So we can start with uh, what we have, then joining the global trades, we get onto a table like this. What do you have? What do you have? What do I have? What do you have? And then we have a discussion along those lines. Oh, okay. And the good thing is that now uh, the, the government white paper is yeah. actually on review. Yeah. I and was just going to ask you uh, within uh, <laughs> a very f a minute, yes. uh, less than a minute, you're going to have to tell us what's next. The review is talked about as one that shall be beginning next year. Uh, we are you should give us give us a timeline, a okay. quick one. Uh, the, the roadmap for the uh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, the roadmap for the the review of the primary curriculum, mm. which has spent something like seventeen years down the road because we are already seventeen years into it. Yes, <laughs> yes, because <laughs> uh, the, it started off in two thousand and five. Yeah. I mean two thousand and seven, mm -hmm. and we went on up to to around two nineteen. Uh, around no no around to it should have been interrupted by two, COVID. Two, so, yeah 2009 mm. so okay. the roadmap okay. the roadmap that we have is that we are starting now to review and we are collecting we are yet to go and conduct an mm. evaluation study that's right so that we, we look for that er, a component which uh, the, the, sp the keynote speaker uh, shared with us okay. the local trend mm. then we shall see that we, we start off and we look at all those issues. We listen to them. Whom are we listening to? Mm. You remember the, the, the children who are on the stage? Questions, 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 <laughs> questions. But we are going to look to find out from the community. Mm. What do you say about the curriculum? What do you want to see in the curriculum? Okay, it's going to be a co full consultation of all stakeholders. Yes. yes. All right, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Deborah Magirachaze, Manager, Early Childhood Education and Care Program at the National Curriculum Development Center, I suppose. Yes. Uh, thank yes. you very much for joining us and uh, for the perspective given. Thank you to Professor Musa Matovu, education expert and uh, one a scholar at uh, the Center for, not a scholar, your center for director at the Center for Postgraduate Studies at the Islamic University in Uganda. This discussion cannot be exhausted, and surely an hour of broadcasting time can also not give us the very best. But we have ignited the debate and also been able to show what kind of timelines are in place for the Ministry of Education to decolonize the curriculum and be able to put you, the Ugandan, on the path to the kind of economic, social, and yes, political transformation that you need. We shall take a break. Take note, we'll be coming up next. <laughs>